Imagine that you met with a guy with the last name of Bankman Fried, who based his company in the Bahamas, and he's trying to get you to buy billions of dollars of his currency, which he controls, and he's playing a video game while he's talking to you. How many red flags is that? This is about people who think they're smart and they're not. This is about billions of dollars lost and millions of dollars that are unaccounted for. It's about a group of 10 people who are in a polyamorous relationship in the Bahamas while they're trading millions of dollars every day. And finally, it's about a guy in his late 20s who convinced groups like Sequoia, BlackRock, IVP, Insight Partners, Tiger Global Paradigm, SoftBank, Lux Capital, and all these other groups to invest billions with him. It's about the Rockford Files. So buckle up, strap in, get yourself some coffee, sit in a comfy chair, because I'm going to explain this to you as if you were 10 years old. Before I can explain anything else, you need to understand what currency is. Currency goes back a long way. Me trade you chicken for fire. Me no have fire. Just have sharp rock. Me want fire, not sharp rock. All I have is sharp rock. All I have is sharp rock. And that's how both currency and self-defense were born. You trade one item for another and you use something in order to defend yourself like a chicken. But let's face it, it's impractical to bring a bunch of chickens around and you need some kind of currency that weighs a lot less. Precious metals. Precious metals weighed less and you could carry them around and they were always worth something. So now we've established the first part of currency, which is scarcity, or how much of the things that you can get. Sometimes it's the opposite of scarcity. It's a bunch of stuff. Like if you have a bunch of dollar bills, it's no longer scarce, and that means that the value is less. A valuable metal that's in short supply, like gold or silver, it's worth a lot. If we make coins out of this, we can trade it. Heavy metals are always worth something. <laughs> If it's already worth something, like a precious metal, then it has an inherent value to it. So different countries started making their own coins. Eventually, it got really expensive to make those coins, so we made dollars instead. Have you ever heard of the gold-backed dollar? Our country doesn't want you to have to carry around heavy metals, so we created the dollar with the idea that you could exchange it for gold, or silver in some cases, and it was what was known as the gold standard. It represented a second thing, which is trust and stability. If I know that at any point in time I can take my dollar and I can trade it in for a precious metal, it's going to be worth more. In 1933, Roosevelt got rid of the gold standard. Now we have what's known as fiat money. Fiat money means that basically the government can print as many dollars as it wants, which means we can have inflation because your dollar is worth less the more of it that you have. Any currency is going to be worth less if you have a ton of it. If you can limit the amount of currency that you have, it's going to be worth more. This brings us to cryptocurrency. Let's say that there's a way that you can limit the amount of currency that's out there. There's a definitive amount and it's going to increase, but it's going to increase at a controlled rate. Let's say that all of us can take a look at the ledgers of everyone. By that, I mean, Whenever a trade occurs, we keep track of it. That's what cryptocurrency is. There's a ledger, and as a mathematical function of the ledger, we know for sure that that money has been traded, or at least with a very good amount of accuracy. But here's the catch. This is cryptocurrency right here. You notice you can't see it, and that makes a lot of us nervous. At least it would make me a little bit nervous. I don't own any cryptocurrency because anything that is by nature a software function can be hacked in some way. And I completely get that mathematically, this isn't something that's supposed to be able to happen, but it's kind of been happening. And Sam Bankman fraud, Sam Bankman fried is an example of it. Let's get to the real juicy heart of the matter. Let's talk about Sam Bankman Fried. His mother is Barbara Fried. And before you ask me why that's important, well, she works at Stanford and her expertise is in tax law. 
We're going to get to that in a bit. You also should know that she's part of a group called Mind the Gap, which raises a substantial amount of money among the Silicon Valley people for certain political causes. His father was Joseph Bankman, who was also a Stanford professor. He is also an expert in tax policy. One of the things that he did is he tried to simplify our returns. So good for him. For now. Sam Bankman Fraud went to MIT. He got a degree in physics from there. He went on to work for Jane Street, which is an investment firm. They trade securities. You don't really need to know all about that. What you need to know is that he learned about arbitrage. What is arbitrage? Arbitrage is a simultaneous buying or selling of securities, currency, or commodities in different markets in order to gain an advantage by the difference in prices between those two markets. In this case, he found out that Japan and America had different prices for cryptocurrencies, so all you had to do is buy from one and sell on the other, and just like that, you made money. That's how Alameda Research was formed. Alameda Research was a cryptocurrency exchange. And here's where things get complicated. Sam Bankman Fraud, Sam Bankman Fried hired Carolyn Ellison to work for him at Alameda. It was kind of a love interest slash relationship kind of thing. Whatever. The point is that he hired her to work at Alameda Research. FTX started at Alameda, but then it was moved to the Bahamas. The Bahamas? Yeah, the Bahamas. Why would you put a company in the Bahamas? Well, there's no taxes in the Bahamas. The offshore companies don't need to file statements. Uh, there's no laws controlling exchanges of currency in the Bahamas. And uh, outside of Bahama dollars, you can exchange whatever you want. By the way, Joseph, Sam's dad, he helped him raise money for FTX. You know, dad, the tax expert who helped him raise money for FTX in the Bahamas. What was FTX? Why, it was a cryptocurrency exchange. Of course it was. But Sam Bankman Fraud, Bankman Fraud needed you to come to his cryptocurrency exchange. And the way that he did so is he created the FTT, which was a cryptocurrency that you could use in order to do exchanges within his exchange of other cryptocurrencies. Let me explain this to you a different way. Let's say that I created the John Dollar. I issue the John Dollar and I allow you to buy a bunch of John Dollars from me. So you get to use the John Dollar in order to buy a bunch of cryptocurrency. But I hold back a bunch of John Dollars because I want to create a scarcity and I also want to make sure that I control the price of my John Dollar. That's what FTX was doing. They were holding back a bunch of their tokens and they weren't allowing all the tokens to trade, which means effectively they could control the price of their token by controlling their token. At some point in time, Alameda Research started going a little bit bust because they were making all these risky trades. So Sam Bankman Fraud Fried just decided, I'm going to give a bunch of these dollars to Alameda Research. Oh my God, there's fraud going on here. The thing that makes crypto valuable is that a bunch of people are trading these tokens and they know what the tokens are worth. But FTX was holding millions of these tokens back, which meant nobody knew really what the value of their tokens were. And once they found out that there were a bunch of tokens that were just milling around that they didn't know about, all of a sudden their tokens aren't worth quite as much. Beyond that, the fact that FTT was being used in order to shore up Alameda research well, that opened up a whole new can of worms. In May and June of 2022, Alameda Research suffered a bunch of losses, and that's when everything went crazy. You might wonder how FTX became so popular overnight. Well, they did a bunch of great marketing. They got major sports teams to kind of buy a piece of what they were doing. They had celebrities that were kind of pitching their product out there. A lot of people got burned with doing this, and a lot of smart people bought it. Just to give you an idea of how wide this goes, Sam Bankman Fried actually testified in congressional hearings on cryptocurrency. Before all of this, what the? 
FTX is currently in bankruptcy, and as part of the bankruptcy proceedings, they decided to check out the properties that FTX owned. They found that some of the property just happened to be in the names of Joseph and Barbara, Sam's parents, and they signed for some property that's in the Bahamas. But according to Sam, that's, that's not his parents. It's, it's actually owned by FTX. It's, it's for the company. By the way, Sam is in the Bahamas right now. Now, normally, I would leave his parents out of this, but even if they weren't signatories on the property down in the Bahamas, mom raised a bunch of money for political candidates, and it just so happened that Sam did the same thing of just donating money to political candidates. Dad was a tax guy who managed to go ahead and raise a bunch of money for FTX. So they're tied up in this too. And they can say that they didn't know what was going on, but it's going to be really hard for them to make that stand up in any kind of a court. At the beginning of this, I told you that this is also about the Rockford Files, because Rockford Files was all about various scams. And one of the points that it made is that at the middle of any con, there's a person who's too hungry for money. They don't realize they're getting scammed because they're looking past all the red flags that exist. They're not paying attention to the guy wearing a t-shirt playing video games while they're having a conference with him about his cryptocurrency. They're not paying attention to the fact that he's based in the Bahamas. They're not paying attention to the fact that the people that are in charge of all these trades are kind of goofy. All they're looking at is the billions of dollars that the company represents, and they don't think about what's behind it because they're being greedy. Don't be greedy. Don't let the prospect of quick money get you to buy into anything. And while we're talking about greedy, please come back. Like, subscribe, check out my other videos. I would love for you to see all the different things that I do. Comment on FTX below and tell me if you understand a little bit more about it now that I've tried to explain it to you. Thanks.